Alice Dunnigan is known as the first African-American journalist to cover the White House. She is a civil rights activist, teacher, author, and correspondent. Her name and story rings bells with the historical community, however, not with the average population. Born in 1906 in Russellville, Kentucky, Alice set her goals high and her drive even higher. Her grandparents were born into slavery, and with achievements, she created a legacy for her generations to come. At age 13, Dunnigan wrote articles for the Owensboro Enterprise, a black publication in Kentucky. Dunnigan made history as the first African-American woman to cover the nation's presidents in the White House. In her 18-year career, Dunnigan accomplished feats no other colored woman did before her. In 1942, Dunnigan relocated to Washington, D.C. to pursue a career in journalism and looked for a government job. She acquired a journalism gig with the black publication titled The Chicago Defender as the White House and Washington, D.C. correspondent. During her time with The Defender, Dunnigan was the first African-American woman elected into the Women's National Press Club, proving that black girls could do it too. In the year of 1947, Alice Dunnigan became a political reporter and was elected the chief of the Associated Negro Press, a position she would hold for 14 years. During 1948, she became credentialed to attend press conferences at the White House and was selected to cover President Truman on his Western campaign. She was forced to pay her own way and took out a loan and invested in herself. Dunnigan faced many hardships as a female black journalist in the post Jim Crow era. She faced sexism and fiscal discrimination in the workplace. While covering former President Eisenhower, the two shared an agitated relationship. Eisenhower pressed hard and Dunnigan applied the pressure even harder. At the time, former president liked to call on her and eventually led him to asking Dunnigan questions prior to the conferences. She is acknowledged in the Kentucky Hall of Fame and has been granted a seat in the Senate and House Representatives press galleries. In 1960, Dunnigan left the press gallery to cover yet another president, President Lyndon B. Johnson, during his Democratic campaign. For a year, she acted as a specialist in the U.S. Department of Labor. As President Kennedy won the ticket, Dunnigan was elected as the Education Consultant for Equal Opportunity. In the year of 1961, President Kennedy appointed Ms. Dunnigan to the Equal Opportunity Committee. From 1967 to 1970, she worked in the White House as the associate editor for the President's Commission for Youth Opportunity. Dunnigan left a positive impact on other female minority journalists that would follow her footsteps. Alice Dunnigan is a true trailblazer and should be noted in the public education curriculum. As a journalist, I owe it to her for taking the steps that no one had taken.